Removing the interior balancers. We allow the balancer to drop to the bottom where there's now no tension in the sash. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Exactly my size. To heat up the glazing around the glass, and then we'll pry the sash out. Now we're going to remove the lower sash by inserting putty knives inside, and wedging against it pry it out from the glazing. While I'm doing this from the inside, Gary will be doing it from the exterior as well. You want to go gentle in this process again so you don't break the glass. Clean up and for safety reasons. Bottom all the way out, Gary. All right. And the bottom glass is out. Now that the bottom glass is out, we're going to remove the lower sash. We're going to do this by collapsing it and demolition with a hammer. For the last step, we'll be removing the frame. This will be done from the exterior by collapsing it in. Now for frame removal, since we want to keep our existing exterior trim, we're going to remove the frames by not removing the outer trim. We start by wedging it out. Okay. Now what we want to do is wedge the frame out. Once we have it pulled out, we're going to pry it. Okay. We'll repeat that on the other side. Okay. Now we'll work the other side. We're holding a block of wood here so we don't mar up the wood here and so we can distribute the weight evenly. Now we'll just work the frame out in pieces. Okay, one of the things that we have in these frames are alarm wires. So we don't want to destroy the wires and we'd like them to be hooked up at a later date. So what we'll do is we'll cut the connections which run up through the frame. We'll cut the wires so we can free it up and we'll remove the contact from the frame. Now the frame is ready to be released out of the opening. All of the insulation that's in here needs to be removed, so we have a clean opening to set to. All nails and obstructions will be pulled out. And the opening will be cleaned using a shop vac. Alarm wires will want to twist up and reinsert into the window later. We want the opening as clean as possible, free of all obstructions. If there's anything inside the opening, any type of dirt or debris, it could cause the window to sit out of level. The next thing we're going to do is prepare the alarm wire to be drilled into the window. We're going to twist the wire up, take a measurement so we know where the center of the uh, opening is for it, and then we'll install the window. Five inches is our measurement for drilling. And now we'll prepare the window and drill the hole. We'll be drilling a 3 8 diameter hole into the window. 
to accommodate the size of the contact. Remove the screen from the window. Find our location inside the window where the hole needs to be drilled, which in this case is at five inches. And then we'll go ahead and drill three eighths hole. Now that we have the window set into the opening, we'll be checking the window for level and plumb. And we'll be doing that by looking at the reveal between the sash and the frame. Okay, to fasten the window, we'll be using two and a half inch coarse thread screws. We'll run them through the jam of the window into the framing inside the wall. For our first screw, we want to start it very low because we don't want the balancer to hit the, screw, the head of the screw. So we'll angle it down in the corner. For windows this tall, it's necessary to put three screws into the jam to reduce any type of movement in the window itself. So we secure in approximately the check rail area to ensure that the window is firmly secured. In the bottom corners, the center's at the check rail and at the top at the heads. We do all four corners and then two in each side jam. Now that the window is installed, we want to check the operation. What we'll be looking for is to see if the locks are locking properly, and if the sashes move up and down freely, and of course if they tilt. So with our top sash up all the way, we'll lower our bottom sash, and we'll check the lock. If the locking mechanism is smooth, and there's no resistance, then that's a good install. We'll also check for function which would be to open the sash, check the tilt mechanism to ensure that it tilts, make sure that it closes firmly, and once again, relocks. Once that's been completed, you're going to want to clean the glass down and sides of the frame. Um, you can use Windex, you can use, there are several different types of cleaner. I prefer a foaming cleaner. We just spray it on the glass so we can eliminate any fingerprints or smudges that are on the vinyl. During the manufacturing process, there is a film that is on the windows, and through the installation, you sweat and you get fingerprints on it, so removing it is the best thing to do.
We'll apply an acrylic latex caulking on the interior. The good thing about acrylic latex and why it's important to use it on the interior is because acrylic latex is paintable. So when your customer has rooms with different colors on the walls, you can accommodate them without leaving a white strip. So I'll be starting at the bottom of the window and running across the sill on the interior. You then want to tool out the caulking, wiping off any excess that you have. You've got something inside the caulking, a piece of paint. If you develop any breaks in your caulking, when you're running it, when it's still wet, you can always go back and add to it, which is what we will do in this case. From the bottom, we'll move up toward the top and do the sides. We want to move our caulk gun in two directions. Um, the reason you want to do two different directions is because if you try to go in one continuous motion straight down, the angle that you cut on the tip of the gun or on the tip of the tube will push out the caulking in a, it'll smear it out on the wall. So you want to go in two directions. You want to do the same thing when you smooth it out. You want to go in two separate directions so you get an even line. 